Hello everyone, Zach Young here, bringing you a live play video, playing a little, uh, Pont Omaha, 25 cent, 50 cent. I think, uh, this might have been a mistake here. Pretty flat, flat. Just sat down not very long ago. No reads on my opponents. These two are anti tables. I bought them for the minimum at all of them. This guy's been opening pot a lot. You're supposed to be opening fairly frequently in a four-handed game. That alone might not tell us that much. Here, with an SBR of three, I really don't see myself getting away from the hand. I think I'm going to toss this. I like the, the double suited, the connectivity, um, the position. I think these guys could raise or back raise respectively and they do have a pretty good hand so I wouldn't fault uh, a call I think a three bet would be bad well maybe a three bet wouldn't have been so bad pretty strong hand There's not a ton of 3-betting going on in these games so far that I've seen. Which means you don't have to... I'm just going to check this back. Um, a lot of nice runners. Any, any card over 9 gives me something. Spades, especially. So what about the dynamics of a three and a four-handed game? You want to be playing a lot on the bottom of the cutoff because you'll be in position after the flop. You don't want to try to hit the flop, you know, by by calling with a marginal hand from the blinds and then check raising, just because you're gonna start with the worst hand so often. You're gonna get in trouble. So you want to be in the driving seat, not just having the lead, but having the lead because you've got a superior hand to your opponent. I'm gonna bet this flop. I think there is some merit uh, because the board's so wet in checking. Now here, I think I'll jam. I want to try to let this guy in. Ooh, nice turn card. Solid flop here. Really dry too. I don't think there's much difference between two and two fifty. I think on the turn, um, he calls the flop. You got to figure out for straight draws. There's no flush draw. I guess you could have a pair and an over pair, but. Given that I've got just over one pot size bet left, I think I can just bet get it in very comfortably. I think if he does choose to go on on the turn, I'm probably a a 
decent underdog, but often he'll be folding the turn. Sometimes she'll be calling with horse. So we're going to see about this flop heads up. Well, I'm going to see about very frequently heads up. I'm trying to sort of wear down my opponent, condition him towards passivity. So I like to try to play more hands in position, playing only fairly decent hands. Uh, out of position to a raise. Okay, so here, an aggressive button opener. Uh, I'm really torn between flatting and three betting. I think I'm getting a call here. Um, getting a little bit of a discount anyway, kind of in position. Should have three bet, obviously, on <laughs> tail three. Give it how thoroughly I crushed the flop. Whew. And here, I, I don't think I have any choice but to let it go, given how, um, you know, reverse implied odds. Great that he full part of that, too. On the turn, pick up the diamonds. I'll value by the river. Against a more aggressive player, I would check, but since my opponent seems fairly passive. Okay. So, one problem here is I'm super short. problem here is I'm super short. Another problem is I could well be squeezed. Sorry, he's super short. I could well be squeezed. Well, I will be. Well, if he calls, I'll be squeezed between both of them. It's out here. And he could have clubs a lot. You have like a set. Interesting that he led with total there. So I timed out here. I think I was gonna call, but pretty close. And that's something I need to consider um, in back raising. Decently marginal hands. I think I probably would have been in rough shape there. Bring out a pair and one of them had ace. Not much to say about this hand. Pretty obvious open. Heads up. Turns not too bad because I have a seven. Hasn't been opening much. Things with an ace I'm gonna feel pretty good about. I don't know. He's probably got aces. Come on, heart. Heart or deuce. He's probably got aces. Yeah, I got aces. <laughs> That's pretty sick. Uh, 
that's the thing about kings of the days too is because it looks really good because it's blocking aces but often the only hand that'll get it all in pre with you is aces and then you're hating the fact that you have the ace because you now you're blocked I don't know if it's uh if it's standard accepted doctrine. And this is interesting that Mr. Pot open raise here is limping. Yeah. I don't know if it's standard accepted doctrine to uh, see my problem here is I'm gonna give up the best hand on the flop so much. I don't know what the hell I'm doing here. I think I just flatted the flop. Now, do I raise the river if he like full pots it? My only concern is pocket tides. Or pocket aces. Three bet here. This guy seems fairly aggressive. And I'm gonna hand with decent playability. What do you four bets? Let me call. Figure him for a pair. He's got aces. He's a little scared of the king. He's got aces with hearts. Well, that concludes my video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I squeeze in a tiny little value out here against A6. Okay, I played all right. This, this SBR silver guy seems pretty good, pretty aggressive, so happy to quit him. It's it's a little tough playing it instead of HUD. Just on a new computer for now. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed my video and do let me know what you thought.